back to you. We are back. We're back for our th 30 viewers. <laughs> For those of you diehard Project Exoset fans, thank you guys so much for watching this build. Yeah. So what are we doing tonight, Matthew? Uh, we're continuing our work on the engine. Uh, we're going to start with uh, drilling the uh, the fitting for the uh, oil return off the turbo uh, because we figured instead of having to redo the oil pan, it would just be easier just to drill and tap this one. And look at how fresh and clean Yeah, look our, at this paint. Our, uh, what was it, rust bullet. Yeah, rust bullet. This stuff's great. All that rust is sealed in there. Yeah. You know what, like, I'm next time I ever do one of these, I'm just gonna do that. We did, Matt did it with a brush. Yep. Um, instead of spray paint, because I've always spray painted my blocks, this came out like yeah, very, very nice. It was really easy to do. Yep. Too, as and well. This is like pretty rugged paint, so. Yeah. Uh, very happy with that. Yeah, yeah so. so we marked our. It's uh, this guy right here. I put a little pilot. Oh, this one. I was looking at that one. Yeah. Right here. So this is just a barb, and I think this is what is this five eighths? I'm not exactly sure. I think it's five eighths. Don't yeah. don't quote me on this. I don't remember. I bought two of these when I did my turbo Miata's uh, drain uh, turbo return. Uh, this is NPT. So this is this matches. I bought an MPT tap set. I don't remember the size of this MPT, but I bought everything years ago to, to do this job. Um, I'm sure if you look it up, you can get the, the thread pitch sizes. So we're gonna pilot that hole and we're gonna work our way up to this bit. Uh, we're gonna use our, I think we have to use a step bit if I remember correctly, just to get it large enough to get the tap in there because it's a little, this bit's not quite big enough for the tap. Yeah, we'll have to try fitting the tap as soon as we get that hole drilled. But this may, actually though, when it's, I look at this, this may get it yeah. done. And maybe that's probably why I have this. So this is a 5 8 drill bit. So that would mean that this is probably a 5 8 MPT to barb uh, fitting. And then this tap, oh, here we go. Uh, this is half inch, half inch MPT. Half by 14, half MPT. Um, so there you go. Those are the those are the sizes for our tools. But um, yeah. yeah, so we're gonna start small. We're gonna work our way up. We're gonna grease the bit. Yeah, I did that. I did it on car on my car, and I never had, I never I saw any when shavings. I had, mine, I had the pans off, but let me tell yeah. you, you boys and girls watching this, cleaning up these pans to resilicone mm -hmm. them and reseal them, and like introducing the possibility for them to leak, which does happen. Um, it's a lot of work, and if it leaks, you're gonna to want to like pull your hair out after you go through mm -hmm. the whole process. So, because you can't take the oil pans off while they're in the subframe, the subframe you, just blocks you, them. It's engine out. Yep. To do the gaskets again, and it's so I wouldn't even like you ha like you wouldn't want to even clean these mating services up while it's in the car. It mm -hmm. takes forever. So, this this pan is bone dry, yep. and I don't think that you know disrupting the old silicone. Like I don't think that it's just gonna all of a sudden start weeping. So. We're gonna leave it on there. We're gonna grease the crap out of all the all the bits. And we're gonna just flush it out with some sea foam and some oil and some oil. Yep. And that's it. This is going in our rat rod <laughs> hooligan machine, anyway. Yeah. So I feel like this is a little bit more fitting in spirit of this type of build. Yeah. Not the most precise vehicle. No. Yeah. But that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. She's gonna suckle with the vacuum. Okay, so this bit's a little bit too big still for a hole. So we're gonna use our wonderful step bit. Same thing, we put some grease on the end of it. Try to catch those poopies right there that are probably gonna wind up in the motor. <laughs> Hopefully not. We'll see. So I'm gonna try to go just bite it off. Should be able to just feel when it goes to the next step. So now we're gonna take our tap and I'm using a 17 millimeter socket which Gives it enough biting strength for me to manipulate it. I don't have a uh, tap handle that's 
quite big enough for this. And I put grease on it. And start it by hand. It's aluminum, so it's pretty soft. I'm gonna do a little bit more by hand with the socket. Okay, so now that it's, it's straight in the line, I'm gonna use an adjustable because I'm gonna need a little bit more torque. So I'm cutting. Back off. And then I'm gonna cut. And back off. It's pretty thin walled too, so it shouldn't. Yeah, so I was telling talking to Matthew about this. I think we're gonna JB weld this. We'll see. We'll see how much we get. When I did my turbo Miata, I, I went right to the block. And I guess like this is a safe spot to tap because if you go down here, there's oil filled up in the sump. It's not gonna drain mm -hmm. properly. So you, up in the block, there's no chance of any sort of congestion, right? It's all just pouring right back down the block. So that's where I went in the Turbo Miata. I did notch my motor mount. I think I tapped it somewhere around here, if I remember correctly. But I had to notch some of the metal in the motor mount to make room for it. But that worked out really well. Um, but this is fine too. Yeah, this is exactly where I did my on my turbo. This Miata. is where Flying Miata yeah. says. I mean, if Flying Miata says it's okay, then it's it's probably okay here. Yeah. So here's our finished tap, and you can see the grease did its job. It held most of the shavings from going into the engine. There's still just a little bit right here on the mouth. I'm gonna take the vacuum and just grab those. And again, we're gonna flush this out. Actually, before we thread this in completely, why don't we flush it right here and yeah. drain it? We'll just do that and get it over with. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, I saw that there. Did you? Yep. All right, I'm just gonna just dump it. Yeah. Flush her out. And that's it. You know, it's not a party until you bust out the JV weld. <laughs> so we're gonna make a little little mixture here. Black nut. Black nut. So I'm just gonna. Give a generous coat. Yeah, just getting the threads, it'll be fine. It's probably all, it's, it's a pretty tight fit, so it's gonna. Yeah, I didn't I didn't bury the tap all the way in there. So like, it's super snug. And that was like, I did that intentionally um, because I want a super snug fit. And like that in conjunction with the JV weld. It's not gonna leak. This should never, you can see like, we're not even like close to buried and like this yeah. is how tight it is. It's snug. Yeah. We could. Okay. Looks good. Who are you? All right, let's get this head on. Okay. So Quinn, we've done this before. Maybe a timer two or 10. Yeah, we've covered this before. So we're, what we're gonna do is just set this up for a time lapse. Yep, ARP and... head studs. Sorry, go ahead, Matthew. I, didn't yeah. just, I stole no, your thunder. That, that's all right. I'm rude, no I'm rude. You're better at explaining this stuff than I am. So these just go in hand tight. Uh, we're not lubing the bottoms, the bottom threads, but the tops, when we apply, when we torque down the nuts to them, do get lubed. And this is literally just like hands tight. So I'm gonna go through with an Allen wrench because I have an Allen. Uh, cut out in them, and I'm going to just give them the ever so slightest bit of snugness to them. They get their final torque for when you actually torque the nuts down with the head in place. Yep. So, fairly easy. This is not very exciting. Yep, we're gonna set up a time lapse. But I will actually, but let me do uh, add one key point here. So on my turbo we had on my 1.6, my head was actually lifting up after 15 pounds of boost, and I was seeing moisture, oil, coolant, all leaking down on the sides here. Mm -hmm. I switched to ARP head studs, torqued them to ARPs, whatever the recommended torque spec was, which will 
know that in a few seconds. 65 foot pounds, I think it said, yeah, is what ARP recommended. Sequence. And then yep. that, that, that engine was bone dry up until the point I sold it. I, had, I put another 35,000 miles on that turbo setup. So these, these do work and they hold everything in place. I even switched these on my NB just in case with a higher compression. Don't know how much of an issue that would have been, but I'd rather do it all. Mm -hmm. so what do these cost? 200 bucks? It's 100, 120 bucks or something like that. I'd rather do it, it all while it's all out because it's miserable pulling the head, mm -hmm. especially while it's in the car. So. Yeah, I don't have them on my car and I've had to go and retorque my, my head down because it was definitely lifting my head. Yep. So it's a real issue if you're going to turbocharge a Miata. Uh, these are a great investment and are well worth it. So. So they weren't all matching the same height and I was getting a little bit confused, but because this block has been sitting for some time, uh, that's the rust that came out of one of the wells in here. So we're going to go through and we're going to clean these all up. Yeah. Case in point why Honda makes superior four cylinder engines because they're aluminum. So Quinn, those uh, ARP studs went in there nice and easy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, super easily. Um, so that was interesting, but we just had to keep working them in and out with oil and chasing them with a tap. So for our head gasket, we're gonna use an OEM Mazda MLS head gasket. This is what I've always run. We've never had any issues with these, so I'm gonna continue to use them. Uh, if you remember a few videos back, we cleaned our mating surface up. So we just wiped it down with a little carb cleaner. So we're gonna get our gasket in place. Make sure that all your oil and water jacket holes line up, which this does, it's in the correct orientation. And I know this because this one doesn't have an oil jacket and there's nothing here on the bottom, so. Also because this engine's been sitting for a while, we coated the uh, cylinder walls in some oil and just uh, ran the crank a little bit just to make sure that that mixed in. Yep. torquing these in sequence so we're gonna they say was 65 or 66 65 is what ARP says we're gonna be risers and go right to the 70 foot pounds we want the max so and I we're doing torqued the, everything to 22 that's like the max so, torque number that motor nobody asked you <laughs> so now we're gonna do 44 so the pattern is from the center spiraling out I didn't hear what I didn't hear what Ty said. I 
I said Max Headstud had to go to a higher torque than that motor will ever make. What's on there? A little turbo action. It's a little tiny turbo, turbo though. Yeah, there's a tiny turbo. It's a little weenie one. Yeah, we got some rust here too. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to clean that off. Yeah, we just mocked it up just because this is exciting and cool to look at. Yes. But that's the that's the basis of our power plant back together. Now it's all peripherals and ancillaries. Yep. It's looking good. We gotta get an intake on there. And that means we are that much closer to driving project yet so set. It's been it's been a slow process so far. Purpose, though, like all yeah. things considered. Yeah. Like, this thing looked pretty knackered and all the stuff was pretty neat. You know, roll cage in. It's gonna cage the front. Out. We're, we're getting there. Yeah. I want that suspension. Where is it? Taco Motorsports, waiting for it patiently. By the time this video posts, I'm hoping we have it. <laughs> um, also guys, we still have the other 99 BB4W head that Matt and I refreshed. Don't mind the ugly valve cover on it, the head is actually very clean underneath. Uh, but everything's everything's redone with OEM seals in it, that's for sale. Hit us up on Instagram, uh, at Slip Angle Media. I think, what are we asking, 850 bucks for it? Yeah. Yep, so that's also available. And yeah. Check out our webinars. Oh yes, I'm getting tired. I, didn't, I forgot to plug it. Check out our webinars on slipanglemedia.com. There we give away tuner parts. Uh, we limit the seats to a very low number, so you have a great chance of taking it home as long as you have a seat or seats, because we know you may want, want friends that want to join. Uh, you are eligible for the giveaway. You do not have to be present for the live. Anybody who has a purchase ticket is, is automatically entered and it helps us give back to you guys for, help, for helping support us, but it also supports the channel without us having to ask for donations or Patreon or anything like that. So it's just kind of like a cool thing. And you get to spend time with Matthew and I because uh, we do do a review on everything that we give away and uh, we do a little Q&A. So there's that too. Those are always fun. They are fun. We get a lot of good questions. I know. And we're so yeah. close to closing out some of these things. So make sure you go check it out and grab some seats. Yeah. And that's it. Guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. If you like this content, give us a like and a subscribe. If you think it sucks, let us know too because we want to hear that. And we'll see you in the next one. Wait, wait. We're doing oh. this different. Done. Done. Done.